Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Coming up in our report, we ask, is climate change putting Europeans more at risk from disease? Climate is heating up. The water is getting warmer, we see more and more of bacteria, and people are getting sick. But first, the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. In short, it was warm and dry across much of Europe last month. Here we can see the official figure. It was 1.3 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial average, making it the joint warmest April on record, together with April 2016. So in a month when millions of us were confined at home, it barely rained in some places. Here we can see the precipitation anomaly map for Europe anywhere in pink here was drier than average last month. This one shows soil moisture anywhere colored in red means that the top layer of soil was drier than average last month. It isn't the same story everywhere though. Here you can see in blue in the Iberian Peninsula, it was wetter than average in April. April was a record-breaking month for sunshine across many parts of Europe, including the UK and Germany. Let's have a look at this map of anomalies across all of Europe. Anywhere here that's pink or red was sunnier. Some places received twice their normal amount of sunshine. Up in Scotland, they had 60% more sunshine than average. And so to our report, and with many of us concerned about health at the moment, we set out to investigate whether climate change is increasing the risk of certain diseases for Europeans. Our reporter, Per Bergfors Nyberg, went to meet a leading expert in Stockholm. There's only one disease on our minds these days, COVID-19, and many are asking, will it fade away this summer, just like seasonal flu? We asked Professor Jan Semenza from the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. Nobody really knows, right? Because this is a new virus that has never been here, right? So we don't know how it's going to behave in a different climate, in a different seasonality. What we do know, though, is that other coronaviruses that normally circulate in human populations they peak in the winter and tip down in the summer and disappear. We hope that this virus will behave the same, but we are skeptical whether that's going to happen or not. Climate change is not responsible for the emergence of COVID-19. However, global warming does increase the risk of other diseases in Europe, including a bacteria called Vibrio that thrives when the Baltic waters warm up. And when people then go into the water, they can get a wound infection if they have a wound or they can get uh, diarrhea from gastroenteritis or other problems like ear infections from these type of bacteria. And it turns out that these bacteria are quite dangerous because if you have a wound infection, it can cause a, um, blood poisoning. And that blood poisoning has the same case fatality rate as Ebola. So it's very dangerous. People die from that. Jan helped develop an early warning system to now alert countries around the Baltic when the bacterial risk is too high. Elsewhere, the emerging health threat is quite different. In southern Europe, it comes from the arrival of Asian tiger mosquitoes carrying tropical diseases. So we see dengue, chikungunya, zika, which are tropical diseases that didn't really exist before in Europe. But we see more and more of these types of outbreaks occurring in Europe because the increased environmental and climatic suitability for these mosquito-borne diseases to occur. Tiger mosquitoes are now present all year round in the coastal and river zones in red on this map. So how should we adapt to these new kinds of risks? You don't want to get exposed to mosquitoes that can bite you and transmit a tropical disease. You might want to avoid bathing in waters that have a high level of bacteria that could potentially be a threat to your health. So there are lots of things one can do to minimize the impact of climate change from an individual perspective. You can read more about climate change and disease and see all the data presented in this program on our website, euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.